Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, March 3rd. Our special guest today is Heather Mosier, and her topic is Enhancing Relationships Through Modern Tech Tools. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing closed captioning for us. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Deneen Lashinsky, who will introduce Heather and answer, or ask her, not answer, ask her the newbie question. I am thrilled to introduce my friend and colleague, Heather Moser, today. Heather has been with our East Penn School District since 2004 as an elementary classroom teacher, instructional support teacher, and now as our K-12 technology integration specialist. Prior to coming to East Penn, she served in the Nazareth School District as an instructional technology gifted support teacher for six years and in the Reading School District as an elementary classroom teacher for four years. She has a master's degree in curriculum and supervision along with a K-12 principal certificate from Penn State. Currently, she's pursuing the EDGE letter of endorsement from Wilkes University and is a Google certified educator and an apps teacher. As the technology integration specialist, Heather seeks out innovation and works through its practical implementation across all 10 of our buildings in our district, which keeps her happily engaged in new and exciting projects. The other big loves in her life are her two sons, Jackson, age 11, and Luke, age 8, and her husband, Mark. She spends a lot of time supporting these three guys in their endeavors, which include basketball, baseball, 4-H, and farming. They have the great pleasure of living on their family farm with a herd of registered Holsteins, which her husband and father-in-law milk twice a day. It's a wonderful place to raise children, and Heather is often outside riding along in a tractor working in the many gardens around their home, or doing her favorite free time activity, which is walking their two dogs through the fields. Thrilled to have her today. And our newbie question is, you ready, Heather? Why are strong, positive relationships important for teachers when they are working with coaches and mentors? Hi there, everybody. So, Deneen, thanks for the great intro. My goodness. Um, so, you all have just a little glimpse of of me, and um, it's interesting. My topic today about relationships. Uh, I find lots of people who think it's curious that I'm a tech integration specialist, even though uh, my home life sometimes seems like I still live in 1950 because we live on a farm and. You know, it's a much simpler, slower pace here on the farm at times. Um, but honestly, the, the concept of relationships is uh, the basis of everything I do both in my work and also in my home life. So I think strong, positive relationships are important everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, whether um, you're connecting with your own family at home or you're connecting with colleagues that you work with or administrators. And I think building relationships and formulating trust uh, and healthy, positive relationships is the basis for everything. And I, in, in my role as a tech integration specialist um, and a coach, it's, you know, it is, it is everything I do. Because without those relationships, uh, if people don't trust me or they are not open to me, um, then I, I I can't help move the needle forward. So that's why I think that they are important and they are the basis of everything that we do. So you can see here on the second slide, I'll just keep going here. Um, this is who I am and the topic uh, of my, my talk today. And my role in the East Penn School District is Tech Integration Specialist. And so when I first came to this role, it's interesting because Deneen, who introduced me, she and I uh, have known each other for quite some time. And she, uh, we had the same role. So we were both instructional support teachers in individual buildings. 
Uh, and it was from that role that I then came to the tech integration specialist role. I have always loved technology, just it's one of those things that I've always been drawn to. I always like figuring things out. I always, you know, like all the new tools. What attracts me to that is how they help save us all time and really how they help us connect with each other. I love watching our participant list over here um, and just seeing where everybody's from. It is amazing to me that we are all sitting here at the same time from different walks of the world and, you know, being here in the same space, and we couldn't do that without technology. So I love my role because I get to seek out new things all the time and then uh, bring those things back and try to uh, move us forward as a district. So my district in particular is East Penn School District, and I'm happy to have some of my buddies here with Deneen and Paula Failinger. Thanks for joining today. Um, but our district is East Penn School District, and oh, actually before we go to that, sorry about that, I'm going to move to the second slide here uh, regarding relationships. Can everybody see that? Okay, great. Everybody can see my relationship slide. So. As I said, that is the basis of everything I do. Even though I am the tech integration coach, um, really I feel like my work is in relationships. And I had the great fortune uh, recently to go to Pete and C, which is in the state of Pennsylvania, our big educational technology conference. And it happens once a year in February. Uh, and I always get the good fortune to go because of my role in the district. And for three days we are immersed in all sorts of new things. Uh, and get the opportunity to make new connections. And this gentleman here, you may be familiar with Tom Murray. He just launched a book called Learning Transformed. And Tom Murray was one of the keynotes at Pete and C. And I found it so interesting that at a technology conference, one of the things he said that resonated with me most was right up here. And I felt so strongly, I tweeted it out. We are in the business of relationships. Uh, and that, in, in essence, is my talk today. I think that there are a tremendous amount of tech tools that can help us enhance and grow those relationships like we never could before. And as I think about that, the thing that I always come back to is a TED Talk that I uh, had seen several years ago, and maybe some of you are familiar with Rita Pearson. Um, but I've asked Peggy if we could just show a short clip of this, and then I believe the link will be in the live binder so that you can watch the rest. Um, you know, at your at your own time. And I see here some people are saying they got to talk with Tom Murray at Future Ready Schools, and he he is a great guy. He's very approachable, and um, he actually lives very close to us. And uh, so we have the good fortune of being in close proximity to him. But I know he works with schools all over the country. So um, so yes. So you can see. Peggy's going to put the uh, YouTube video up for us. And if you would, click play on your, you'll see just the first two minutes and 32 seconds of Rita Pearson. Be sure to click on talk again, Heather. OK, Peggy, there you go. Can everybody hear me now? I just said a whole lot of great stuff, and nobody could hear me. Anyway, what I said uh, before I, as I forgot to press the talk button, is that um, I love Rita Pearson. And I think what she says about relationships between teachers and kids is 
is not that different than our relationships with our colleagues. So in my role as a mentor, um, that's really important. It's really important that, you know, other teachers feel comfortable with me and like me so that they are open to me being in their classroom and working with them. So knowing that that is the basis of me and how I approach my role, as you see the next slide, um, this proves challenging. <laughs> this is a glimpse of our school district, the East Penn School District. We have 10 buildings. We have 529 teachers and 8,176 students. And if you see my little picture interspersed there, there's only one of me. Um, we are fortunate in that our elementary buildings have coaches like Deneen in them, but their time as well is not full-time coach. It is part-time coach uh, and part-time uh, MTSS uh, coordinator and, and so forth. So they have many other roles they do as well. Uh, so when I first came to work for the entire district, I thought, how the heck am I going to do this? How am I going to build human connection and significant relationships with people, which is the basis of supporting teachers moving forward with their technology. So, um, you know, I really had to think about this, <laughs> which leads me to the things I'm going to share with you today, and that is all the different tech tools that I have found uh, that help me make human connections quickly and easily and build on them. So if you take a look at my next slide here, these are some of the core tools that I use on a daily basis. So I'm curious um, if you would, you take a look at this slide with core tools, how many of those icons do you recognize? And type in the chat the names of the ones that you do in fact recognize. Just type them in there real quick. If you see somebody put one up, uh, put up a different one. Yeah. Paula uses all of them. Paula Salinger, Flipgrid, yay, to all 12. So Google Classroom I see coming through. Seesaw, Remind, Calendar. Um, so many people are familiar with many of these. And so what I'm just going to share is sort of how I have come to use all these tools. And I know many of you are already using many of them. Um, but what I want to talk about is sort of my evolution in using them and why I've chosen to use the tools I've used. So you'll see here, I call this my evolution of innovation. I am, in fact, in my third year as the tech integration specialist for East Penn. Um, but certainly my first year coming into this role, I was not using all 12 of these. Uh, so when I first began, Okay, the very first question I asked myself when I was hired to come into this role, I was hired in, uh, I think, May or June, and I started July 1. So um, the first thing I thought, my God, how am I going to make myself accessible to everyone at any time? Because that was very important to me, that teachers felt that they had access to me. So I wanted them to feel like they had access to me and they could call me directly and have me come. But I also recognized that with 529 teachers, I was going to spend all my time in email and scheduling if I didn't have some simple system for folks to, to get to me. So what I'm going to do right now is I want to browse out and show you my browser, and I want to show you how I answered this question for myself with my website and Google Calendar and this little plug-in called You Can Book Me. Has anybody heard of You Can Book Me? If you have, just put a quick note in the chat. Um, but I'm going to switch over to browse out. And you give me just a minute here. Um, there we go. I'm going to show you my Google Chrome. Can everybody see the Google Chrome there? I'm going to try and see my chat too. Yes, everybody's seeing it. Okay, here we go. So um, here's what happened with my website. So this is a look at my website. And when I first began in this role, I had to use WordPress, which was the website that the district as a whole manages people's websites on. And this was the only tool that we had available. So my very first job was to get a handle on WordPress and to try to make a website. Um, and so you can see this is where I began. 
And I had never used WordPress before, so that took a little bit of time to feel really feel comfortable because it is such a w robust uh, web development tool. Um, but I created it, and then what I did is I used this little website called BookMe, and I actually posted BookMe right on my website. And what this does is it links automatically to my Google Calendar. So when teachers ask, Heather, can you come to my room? I say, I would love to. Go to my website and book me. And I'll come, as long as there's an opening in my calendar, I'll come when it suits you best. So you can see uh, my availability is sometimes filled up. Um, but what it does is as you scroll through here, it gives teachers the feeling that they can get access to me whenever there's an opening. Okay, so you'll see they come in in the blue parts. They, they click on when it works for them. And then on my calendar, when you take a look at my Google Calendar, this is my Google Calendar for next week. And if you notice down here in the afternoon, you'll see I have one, two, three, four, five, six bookings for Monday morning, for Monday, over my day. And so what happens is the teacher will come on the website and they will click the time slot they want and then they'll all book in here. And now in this case, in the afternoon, I had one teacher who booked me for 2 o'clock and I knew what building she was going to be in. So what I did then is I padded my schedule and I sent an email to that entire building and said, by the way, Shoemaker, I'm going to be in your building. If anybody wants me to stop, go ahead on book me and fill a slot in. And I had one, two, I had four other people reach out and book me all around that two o'clock slot. So it keeps me busy. It keeps me moving. Um, I feel like my the main part of my role is to, in fact, you know, be with teachers and be out in classrooms and go between the buildings and see as much as I possibly can. So um, in that way, using my website, using Google Calendar, and using BookMe was really my first step in, um, in my evolution. It was really the first part. And, you know, I mentioned Twitter on that initial slide as well. If we... Uh, if we go back here to this first slide, um, we mentioned Twitter, and that was something that I had not leveraged prior to coming into this role, but what I, so I just began very simply with Twitter, and you can see I'm not a tremendous tweeter still even, um, but this is the piece that is really relevant for me is the following. I have made so many connections that I can maintain through Twitter. So connecting with Tom Murray at Pete and C is great because I don't have a lot of time to talk to him, but you know, we can continue to connect through Twitter and, and keep connected, which is great. Um, so I find Twitter, I have, I became pleasantly surprised with Twitter. When I first started and there was a limit on the number of characters, I used to tell people, I said, oh my gosh, I don't think I can do Twitter, I don't think I can, I can be that uh, economical with my words because uh, talking pretty well comes naturally to me, <laughs> as you can all see. Um, so anyway, so those are the tools that, in fact, I really tried to leverage. So in the next, the next step then in my evolution really became, um, and I'm, I know I'm showing you the slides here in my um, I'm showing slide sharing them as opposed to you actually seeing the slides. Um, and I'm just checking here on the chat, and Paula is saying Twitter's the go-to social media to build relationships with educators. I completely agree with that. Um, so I also hear you can book me also integrated with Google Resource and Calendars. Uh, but some I'm looking here, Maureen. Yes, other times they want the STEM lab in my time. Yeah, I would think in that case, You Can Book Me is a free version. The one that I use, you can only connect it to one Google Calendar. There is the ability, however, to upgrade to a premium version, and I believe in the premium version, you can connect to two different Google Calendars. So if you run two different Google Calendars, um, that might solve your problem there. So. So as I go on to the next evolution, 
you'll see um, one of the, the things I do in my role is I do a lot of face-to-face -face professional development. So um, I run courses in the summertime. I run courses in the evening for teachers. And the main question I ask myself is how can I do face-to-face -face PD differently and uh, make it accessible to every – sorry, I'm on the wrong slide here – and really model my beliefs and practice what I preach. Um, so again, thinking about relationships being the basis of that and my role as the tech integration specialist to be modeling innovation and modeling a growth mindset and modeling moving forward, I had to change some of the PD I was doing. Um, so one of the things, when I first came into this role, we were in fact a G Suite district, but there were not I would say a tremendous amount of teachers who were using G Suite um, a lot, who felt comfortable and proficient, and I made that one of my main goals, is to sort of fly the flag all the way up the flagpole with the G Suite uh, and to use that in everything I was doing uh, to, to sort of, I always say, spread the Google love. So. Um, one of the things I began doing is I began to create those courses as blended courses and to not necessarily blend it in the sense that people were doing things at home and then coming to the course. I still, because of our system, had to offer three-hour courses and six-hour courses and offer them in those chunks and have them available, but blended in the sense that I began building my materials with all these different Google tools so people had more to go home to. So you'll see here, I'll go out to, this is a course I just taught this week, and it's called Google App Smash. Um, and these courses continue to evolve, but really what I create is a hyperdoc in the context of the course, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, and what it does is it enables me to embed other Google tools right into the course. So for instance, with this course I just taught this week, I had a nice small group, which was wonderful, and I have folks come in, and the very first thing they do is a Google form that sort of gives me a, a quick sense of their Google proficiencies, what, where they're at, what they're interested in learning. Uh, I tell them all the time, this is your time, this is not my time. I want you, in fact, to dig into the Google tools that are most pertinent to you and feel as though you have, you have grown and you have learned. So, Gauging the folks in the room using that Google form gives me two opportunities. One, to really get a sense of who is sitting before me and, and who I'm working with for that period of time, you know, to make that connection. Um, typically, when I do my Google form, I ask things like, what is your preferred learning style? Do you prefer to be collaborative? Do you prefer to be independent? Do you prefer, uh, you know, to work totally by yourself? or with just one other person? Do you prefer direct instruction? Um, and that gives me a sense of where their comfort zone is. And, and again, it's about getting to know people, getting to know your students. And then you can see we continue, and I do do some talking, but I also let them jump in and engage in things. So again, this links you out to another Google form that explains uh, how they're integrated at East Penn, and then I show them some different ways they can smash the Google Apps together to do productive things. So again, this is another tool. The entire second day looked like something totally different, but based on the first day and what they were interested in, we, we adapted all this. So the Google tools have been a tremendous uh, help in my role, because now what happens is these the teachers come to the course, and they take this Google Doc with them. They all make a copy and have it in their Google Drive. And you can see at the bottom of each course, remember, there's even more teacher resources on Heather's website, and you can book me at any time. So no matter what I do, whether I'm leading faculty meetings or whether I'm leading PD, uh, I always bring folks back here so that they know that I am continuing to build resources that will support them anytime, anywhere. They don't necessarily have to be face-to-face -face with me. And, and that has been a big part of my evolution. That has been a big part of my evolution. 
Um, if I'm going to check the chat here and see what people are saying about that. Deneen, you don't know Pear Deck. I'm going to show you Pear Deck because uh, Pear Deck is a really neat thing. And I have just begun to scratch the surface with Pear Deck. But Heather? there is a tool. Yep. I just want to jump in for a second and say, don't worry about checking the chat as you go along because you have so much great stuff to share that I would love for you to just keep going. And then Lori will okay. jump on and ask you questions and um, extend some of that during the Q&A. OK, you got it. Thanks, Thank Peggy. you. Yeah. Uh, can everybody tell this is my first time doing this? So uh, I, as I told Deneen when I agreed to do this, I said, I haven't done this before, so I, I might be modeling failing forward. Uh, but uh, you know, as like-minded educators, I'm sure you are all, um, you know, you're all easygoing with that. So I appreciate your patience. Um, so I was talking about Google Doc and using that and use it blended learning and bringing folks back to the website all the time. So now not only do we have this face, face time where we've made a connection, but now, by the way, I'll come to your classroom. You want to try some of this in your room? I'm happy to come in and we can talk some more on a planning period. Or if you want to start using, you want to give a Google form to your kids, but you're really nervous to do that, I'm happy to come in and support you as you get started as a little safety net. Um, so, you know, again, it's, it's that very circular being in front of people, but then also working with people, and again, the basis of making those human connections. So um, I use not only docs, I've used slides, forms, sheets, and one of the things I have recently started using, which uh, I don't know if you've seen this or not, uh, many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with Flipgrid. I think one of the Classroom 2.0 live shows actually did a Flipgrid. And so you'll see the link here actually takes us to a Flipgrid. And um, you can see I've had a lot of fun with this. But this course that I just taught this week, you can see a couple of the participants. And what I asked them as a quick exit ticket out the door is tell me what you learned and how do you plan to smash your apps together. And uh, I have two purposes when I started using Flipgrid this year. And I have done this for every face-to-face -face, uh, PD I've taught this year. Number one, um, I want to introduce a new tool in a very integrated way. But number two, I think there is tremendous power in blended learning and screencasting. And I think many people do not do it because they're uncomfortable being in front of, in front of the camera. And I remember when I first started screencasting, it was, I was nervous, I was afraid, I didn't want to see myself, I thought my voice sounded dumb. Um, and it took a little while to get over that when you first begin that process. And so what I tell all my participants is that I'm going to make you do this to push you out of your comfort zone and just get you to start thinking about, as we evolve forward closer to a one-to-one -one environment, screencasting may be a great way for you to begin to house some of your content in a blended learning environment and give your kids more access to you and more access to the work so they can work on it any time to, again, make connections and enhance relationships. And that really um, is sort of my next slide of evolution. As you come here, uh, this is a big question I'm always asking. How can I simultaneously build capacity and community to help others evolve? And screencasting has been uh, one of the big ways that I have done that. You can see this icon here is Screencast-O-Matic. Many of you may be familiar with that. There's other tools as well uh, I have used, but this has been the one I have landed on as my favorite. And YouTube, since we are a G Suite district, uh, I have come to Screencast with Screencast-O-Matic, push my videos quickly to YouTube because I have unlimited space there. And then with the other Google tools, I can very quickly put those YouTube videos anywhere. So um, it's really, I'm going to show you my YouTube channel here quick. This is my district YouTube channel. And once I really started getting comfortable with screencasting and I had my system down, um, 
you know, I got, I get so many emails. It's crazy with 10 buildings and that many teachers. And I was beginning to get teachers who would just send me questions in email. And which is all well and good, but sometimes it's very hard to really be clear in explaining to folks. Uh, or answering their question in an email. And I found myself spending all this time typing emails, and I thought, this is ridiculous. So what I began to do is I began to answer people's email questions with a screencast. So you can see this one. I'm not going to play it for you, but um, this one here, if you take a look at my list down here, you'll see I, this is my little uh, code here, sites question for that particular person. This was another sites question. This was a forms question. And you'll see the one here, I, hi I start with the email. This was a teacher who wrote me an email and had a question. And you'll notice I was able to make a screencast in two minutes. It would have taken me half an hour to type up that email and send it to her. And not only does the screencast feel is easier for me to execute, but it feels so much more personal. And so now instead of uh, typing an email back, I simply send Susie this very quick link and say, hey, Susie, it was quicker for me to make you a video than it was to type the answer. Here you go. I hope this helps. And I can very quickly uh, clarify and demonstrate what, what they need. And I have gotten tremendous response from these short screencasts for folks. Um, when I send one of these back as a response, I say, feel free to share it with someone else who you know is having a problem, and I keep them all on my YouTube channel, um, and, and it's been great. And I'll show you here, if I just scroll up quickly, you'll see I've begun to get a little bit smarter about it. Uh, early on when I started this, you can see I'm making three and four minute, one minute, two minute, and I have a person's name, and I was very personal. I would start by saying, hey, Susie, thanks for your email. Here's your quick screencast. Um, but then I get more questions in email, and some of them were the same, and I thought, oh my gosh, I made Susie a video, but it says, hey, Susie, that makes no sense. So uh, I got a little bit smarter, and you'll see up here, share permissions in Google Docs. That one's a little bit more general, but anytime I get that question, I quickly share that video with folks. Uh, so this, this is where the next piece took me. And then from here, uh, we had a tremendously big project in our district. And at the time when I was starting these screencasts, we didn't even have consistent devices for teachers. So one of the biggest projects that I have done in this role is we rolled out brand new MacBook Airs to our entire teaching staff, which is 529 teachers. Um, and I did a lot of the coordinating for that. We did that just last spring. That was a step in our district uh, moving towards one-to-one. -one. The very first thing we did was give teachers reliable, high-quality devices. Uh, and the second thing that we are just about concluded with now is a major infrastructure upgrade in all 10 of our buildings. So we we're fortunate enough to have our board support all that. Um, and when we rolled out the MacBook Airs last spring, we had quite a challenge because we have very limited PD days in our district, as I'm sure many of you <laughs> can, uh, you know, you have the same problem. So we were going to roll these devices out, but I, we only had half a day for everybody to roll their devices out and to give them some introduction. And at that point in time, we had teachers all over the district who had different devices. Some had Dell. Some had Macs, some had laptops that were six years old, um, some had desktops. It was all over the place. So getting everybody in one place, uh, I used these tools. And what hit me, I'm going to take you to this website now, which this began, this website began as the MacBook Air website. And what I did is I began to house things here because, again, I wanted to not only get people a custom to their MacBook Air, but I wanted to model blended learning. I wanted to show teachers what might be possible once they have a reliable device, once our infrastructure is upgraded, and once we get the devices in hands of kids. I wanted to model this is where we're headed. Um, so what I did is I began to create this website, and then being that I'm the only tech coach in the district, what we did is we, in fact, um, I had to enlist the help of other teachers. And other teachers 
um, what they did is they came in and they came in for two full days and they helped me build this website. So what you're seeing here, and I'm going to go slow, is that uh, this first one, there was some essential information we felt as though every teacher in the district needed to know. And we sat down as a team and we figured out what was that information. And this slideshow was built and housed on this website. So we wanted everybody to understand that. We went ahead and did that. You can see we began little screencasts that were actually embedded in the slideshows and put on the site. So now we only had three hours to get together. We introduced people to the site and we got them started, but then they had all this to take back with them so that as they continued to evolve, as they continued to get comfortable, they could come back to this site at any time and learn more. So <clears throat> what we did is every teacher came to a class that was, in fact, a blended learning class. And they came in and they spent time going to three separate stations in their classroom, one of which was essential information. This was the direct instruction station. And there was a facilitator who ran through the slideshow and talked about all these pertinent things with them. And then there was an independent station. And at the independent station, teachers were able to uh, engage in any part of these slideshows. So if they were, br we put one together for folks who we thought would be brand new to Mac. We put one together for folks who perhaps they were already working on a, a laptop, a Macintosh, and they could go beyond. And then we also did short introductions to all the different software, which, you know, Providing this content is no big deal. There's plenty of places you can go for this content. What made this unique and so powerful in the context of this conversation about relationships is how we, in fact, did it. So what you're seeing is that for each of these different areas that we talked about that we thought were important, a different teacher made the screencast. So you'll see here, this, these are two teachers who teach in two of our elementary buildings. They created a screencast together about how to use the launch pad. So now, as our entire community came together to learn about their MacBook Air, not only are they learning about the Air, they're meeting people along the way. Now here's a teacher from Shoemaker, and she's teaching people how to do notifications. And here is a teacher from West Coastville, and he's teaching people about the preview. And here's someone from Willow Lane. So now they're scrolling through, and they're learning about their Mac, but they're like, oh my gosh, I know that teacher. She's doing this? Wow. And they're meeting people, and they're seeing familiar faces, and it's so much more powerful because of that human connection. Um, so this, this I'm, I have to admit, I'm quite proud of how we did this. We had, I think, 52 different teachers uh, who came and helped me with this. And again, I, I was able to put some things together ahead of time, and then we worked as a team. We built this, and then when the laptops were distributed, it was those teachers who had all helped make the screencast. They facilitated that blended learning session. Um, and this website has continued to evolve as now we are moving beyond MacBook Airs. We have some iPads in kindergarten rooms, and we're looking to expand that for next year. Um, and so, uh, again, relationships were the base here. We used the tech tools, but we really based it in relationships. Um, that was sort of the third part in my evolution, and I know we're getting close on time here to Q&A, but this last slide um, really talks about picking the right tool. And what I have discovered is that while building websites is great, and I very much enjoy building websites, um, and I have evolved really from using WordPress to Google Sites, which um, if you're not using the new Google Sites, you're really missing out because it is a tremendous tool that is quick and easy and simple. Um, I find that, you know, teachers are very busy people. You are managing kids. You are managing paperwork. You are, it's such a busy day. And uh, Google Sites is so slick and so quick and simple it really enables teachers to put something together very quickly, very easily that looks great. 
um, and you know they don't need a tremendous amount of time to learn how to use the tool. So one of the other things, you know, beyond using sites and building websites and using Google Docs, I've come to appreciate that <clears throat> depending on who your audience is, whether it's parents or it's you know young students or high school students or it's fellow colleagues, you really ha you can't always use the same tool. You really have to pick the tool that is going to uh, meet your audience, and that helps foster the relationship, meeting people where they are. So uh, one of the other things I do in my role is I am the advisor for our cyber program. So again, <laughs> this is our high school cyber program at Emmaus High School, and I manage the website. Again, I try to put as much information out there as possible. So I do a lot with Google Sites and posting. I do screencasting. You'll see there is a section down here, Mrs. Moser screencast, because again, I think that's really pertinent. But what I found is that these high school kids, I am an elementary teacher by trade, and I am used to the enthusiasm of elementary students. So uh, working with high school students has been an adjustment for me. And what I found is that they really were not responsive in the ways I thought they were going to be responsive. Uh, so I had to pick some different tools. And what I came to in that sort of realization uh, for my high school students, they some of them were checking the website, some of them weren't. Forget about emailing. Email is old school with teenagers. Um, but what I I plugged into was their device use and how every teenager is connected to their cell phone. So um, I use the tool Remind, which many of you are probably familiar with. And I adopted this for part of the VESPA program. And I have to say that this has been uh, a tremendous, a tremendously better way to connect with high school students uh, than how I was doing it previously. The first year I advised VESPA, I, I did not really, I wasn't connected with as many kids as I wanted to be connected with. But now you can see that I've got kids all this week. I've got kids texting. I probably had 10 kids out of our 70 who were texting me this week about one thing or another, and that leads to them coming in and, and getting the help they need. Or, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not able to help the high school kids with their content. Remember, I'm elementary. I I only go to about fifth grade math. I'm a, my own son is in sixth grade, and I'm struggling with his homework. So I always tell them I I can't help you with high school math, but you know you come on in, and I'll I'll connect you. I'll help you make a human connection with a high school math teacher who can support you in your efforts. Um, and again, always bringing it back to those human connections. So. The tools that I've talked about and the tools I use, that really is the basis for me and, um, you know, how, how I continue. So I'll continue to evolve. One of the, the other tools, Seesaw, oh, wow, talk about the potential for young students. We have, I have some kindergarten teachers who, you know, a quick introduction to Seesaw and the places they have gone with that are tremendous. If you haven't seen Seesaw, it's an online learning journal and um, it's a tremendous way for kids, kindergarten kids, six-year-olds, to create content with video, with uh, online drawing tools, with all sorts of things, with their voice and to show what they know and to share that with their classroom teacher and also with their parents. Um, so again, would I use Seesaw with high school kids? Probably not, but it is a tremendous tool in the elementary schools and I think has tremendous potential to, to evolve our relationships. How, how wonderful for classroom teachers to be connected with parents on a daily or weekly basis. You know, this is, tools like Seesaw are going to make uh, the weekly newsletter, in my opinion, obsolete or emailing parents obsolete because you will be able to send them quick texts and quick announcements on a daily basis. They'll be able to see the work their child is doing, which as a working mom, I know what a gift that is. So to be doing my own work and get a blip on my phone that says, wow, you know, your son created this. Look at the great job he did. So again, building that relationship between teachers, students, and parents, and that's what it's all about. 
um, I am I am always failing forward. <laughs> I believe that uh, trying new things, there's no shame in messing things up along the way, which perhaps you can all tell from how I've navigated Blackboard today. Um, but Meet, Google Meet or Google Hangouts is one of the things I am dabbling with now to try to cover more ground. Um, and I'm, I'm failing forward with it at this point. I don't have it uh, all figured out how I can use that tool in a better way to leverage connections with more teachers and to save time because uh, driving between 10 buildings is sometimes uh, I feel like I'm losing ground and I, I often think, wow, how can I harvest, how can I harness this powerful video collaborative tool to connect with teachers uh, in a more timely way or so I don't have to travel quite as much. Um, so I, that's the one I'm currently failing forward with <laughs> and seeing how I can evolve that uh, and work that into my current process of the website and everything else. So I think that is um, a lot of what I was planning on talking about. I can quickly go back to Blackboard Collaborate and um, let's see. I think at this point I have to click back to slide. So I going to do that. I'm going to stop my application sharing. Well, oh, looks like somebody did that for me, right? How's that? Can everybody see? Are we back to the slides now? Okay, great. So, uh, Peggy, I think that pretty much concludes what I was going to say. If folks have questions, I'm, I'm happy to uh, to answer any questions folks have. Yes, I did catch your, a couple of questions that you didn't answer during your presentation, Heather. Um, OK. Out of all the tools you shared, what's your favorite go-to tool? My favorite go-to tool? I would have to say it often depends on the situation, but uh, I am uh -huh. a Google I am a Google girl. I the power uh -huh. of the G Suite is tremendous, and I I love Google Sites. Uh, I would say uh, you know I often am building things in Google Sites. I like Google Classroom very much too, mm -hmm. um, but Google Sites uh, is one that. If I had to pick just one, that might be it. <laughs> you were going to talk about Pear Deck? Oh, yes. It's, a little bit? Uh, yeah, Pear Deck, and I, this is another tool I am just scratching the surface with, but Pear Deck is an online teacher presentation tool. So yes. what it enables teachers to do is you can, it, it is a competitor with Nearpod, if you are familiar with Nearpod. Uh, but what you can do is you can put images, you can put videos, you can put all of them into a single presentation and it gives you the opportunity to poll students. Um, to do many of the things you can in fact here do in Blackboard, you can do them inside a Pear Deck. And what is so wonderful is for teachers who are not comfortable smashing a whole bunch of different apps together, you know, certainly you know, our, our friend Paula Failinger, who's here with us today, uh, she's a master second grade teacher, comfortable with technology. She can harness many different tools in her, in a, in a single lesson, you know. Not all teachers are comfortable with that. If you have teachers who are not comfortable, Pear Deck is a great way to get them started because they can do formative assessment inside of Pear Deck. They can do whiteboarding activities inside of Pear Deck. They can share links inside of Pear Deck. They can share images, other things, and have all the students in one place. Pear Deck also enables them to control that. So if you have students, you want all the students on one particular slide, you can keep them there. Um, and it has tremendous uh, integration with Google, so you can actually 
you can actually store your Pear Deck inside Google Drive. So this is a tool that I am uh, looking at really closely right now in terms of making recommendations to different teachers uh, who, who it might be a good fit. Okay. Yep. Um. After your PD, do you do you get a lot of teachers booking you? A variety of teachers or the same people? <laughs> you do? Yeah. Yeah, I do. It's interesting because someone said to me, well, Heather, how do you end up going where you're going? And what mm -hmm. typically will happen is if uh, a building principal asks me to come and, you know, work with the entire faculty on something, then mm -hmm. I end up being at that building for a while because typically a lot of people then will will book me right then and there. And, mm -hmm. you know, I take people back to the website, but, you know, for instance, last week I was in a building I hadn't been in in a while, and mm -hmm. I all I did was walk around the building, and I had three different teachers stop me, and consequently we put them on my calendar, and I'll be going back to that building for the next three weeks. So, mm -hmm. so it does. It's, you know... I often find that. With all your buildings, et cetera, and all the face-to-face -face time, how do you find the time to keep all the resources on your site updated? Well, do you I, time I'm, just I, to do, work on, on I do sometimes. Finishing, I, I, I'm finishing the question. It's lengthy. That's the first okay, part. Okay, sorry. Um, do you schedule time just to work on updating your resources? This teacher is also a tech integration specialist. I find myself doing that in addition to everything else at night, weekends, etc. Yes. I would say yes to all of the above. I try uh -huh. uh, to schedule office hours, and I will go into my Google Calendar and block time out every week because inevitably there are projects other projects that I work on besides having face time with teachers. Mm -hmm. So I try to make sure I build some of that in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm, I'm not always good at saying no, so sometimes then if someone asks, I say, oh, yeah, sure, I have office time, <laughs> and I'll see you mm -hmm. then. But then, and, uh, and then, you know, that building time ends up happening in the evening. So. Mm -hmm. Have you used YouTube Live? I have only used YouTube Live as a recipient. I have not tried that uh, to execute that myself yet. Just at the, the recent P&C conference, mm -hmm. they, uh, they had live feeds of all the different sessions. So if you couldn't make it to a session or you were way late because you didn't get on the, the shuttle bus quick enough, you could pipe in and watch. So. That's, mm -hmm. that's something else that's on my radar that I would really like to sort out and see how we could use that. Mm -hmm. I think those were the questions that I was able to capture that you hadn't answered. Um, okay. Does anyone else have a question for Heather? I see the question there about do you have trouble getting teachers to sign up for your PD? Yeah. And mm -hmm. yes, I I do. That is um, we always struggle with that because sometimes there's not a lot of people. But I mm -hmm. figure even if I get just a couple, it it tends to spread by word of mouth. Sure. Okay, thanks so much for presenting. Heather, you did a wonderful job, and I think people did learn a lot today. I'm okay. going to go ahead and turn the, the show over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. Thank you so much, Heather. It was just so incredible to hear you walk us through the process that you use. I mean, that is so valuable. And I can almost see why people might not sign up for PD, because they're getting such great 
personalized attention in all of the ways you interact with them that, I mean, you just offer something for everyone and you have really emphasized for us how important it is to have alternatives. Everything doesn't work the same for everyone. I am so inspired. Thank you so much. And we do have some other great shows coming up, so I hope you all come back every Saturday that you can. Next week, we're going to have Jolie Boucher joining us to talk about differentiating instruction with hyperdocs. And she's going to focus on the elementary classroom. We've had HyperDocs presentations in the past, and I'm so excited that we have another one to dig deeper and learn even more about them. Such an amazing tool. On March 17th, we're going to have a, an assistant principal joining us. Meredith Akers is going to be talking about Lots of ways that we can use tech tools for leaders. So that's not just principals, but it's also any teachers who are leaders in their schools. And March 24th, which we mentioned in the chat, Paula Fellinger is going to be our featured teacher. And I can't wait to hear what she has to share with us. And then March 31st, we'll be taking a break so that we can all celebrate Easter weekend with our families if that's a holiday you celebrate. So I hope you'll join us every chance you can. And thanks so much for being here today. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargard on its latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as it's open to the public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher using this form or from within the Live Binder. You can nominate yourself as a featured teacher for the month as well. The video collection for the recordings is available on iTunes U and also in YouTube. The Classroom 2.0 Live survey should open as you exit the session. You could also take the link from the chat box or from within the Live Binder. If you do request a professional development certificate, please use a personal email address for this request. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. And thanks to Patty Ruffing for sending these out, as well as uh, having your name print on their certificate. Special thanks to our special guest, Heather Mosier, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>